So we will start this session by I trying to understand how CVI is defined in literature and how classification affects our patients. So traditionally we understand CVI as vision loss from damage to retrogenic plate pathways and consider that the anterior visual pathways and the eye is essentially normal. This is a very straightforward diagnosis and you're defining loss of vision as vision reduction in acuity and visual field. But we all know that uh, all these children have some amount of concomitant ocular pathology and it has been well documented in our population by this study conducted by LV Prasad Eye Institute. Internationally also how CVI has been defined and the terminologies that were used were studied in this review article by Saki and others. And uh, they recommended that after looking at all the uh, incidents of pathologies uh, reported that an additional clause has to be added to the definition of CVI that any degree of ocular or anterior pathway damage present if it does not explain the degree of visual impairment then that should also be considered as CVI. So this is very important because just because a child has CVI we must not neglect his uh, eye examination. And on the other hand, if there is a macular pathology, we must not assume that CVI cannot concurrently be present. And in all these cases, identification of function is more important than anatomical diagnosis. So assessment for CVI is best done by a multidisciplinary team and all metrics such as clinical examination, visual uh, assessment and visual behavior assessment has to be done. What assessments are being done now in order to classify and investigate? So this review article found that all this uh, uh, medical history, examination of behavior, structured history, these were all the techniques which were used uh, to investigate and diagnose CVI all together or in part. Essentially, CVI is a diagnosis of exclusion. Since my other colleagues will be talking about neuroimaging and other things, I would like to go into the history taking and behavior assessment uh, in this talk. A structured history taking is a very important part of CVI uh, assessment and classification. In our country especially, this is a very simple thing to do because it only needs one person who will spend time to ask the questions. The visual skills inventory by Dr. Gordon Dutton is the th uh, uh, in history taking protocol that we have been uh, using. It consists of visual skills inventory for two age groups, four to eight years and over eight years of uh, age. And it takes into consideration all the aspects of dorsal and ventral stream dysfunction in uh, uh, the uh, visual impairment of these uh, children and questions are directed at each one of them. So when you put them all together, you have a very good idea of the child's visual behavior. And if you combine it with other questionnaires such as the strengths and difficulties and social behavior questionnaire, you can get a very good idea of what is this child's quality of life. CVI levels have been defined by different people in different ways. This is a definition which is has been used many times by ophthalmologists. But when you tell somebody that their child has to 20 by 200 or 6 by 60 level vision or something like that in one eye, both eyes, it really means nothing much to the uh, therapist, the teachers who are handling these children on a day-to-day -day basis. So all people working in the field of developmental delay now would prefer us to use uh, grading based on the international classification of functioning in disability. So ICF categorization is a much more valuable tool in order to help these children gain the right type of therapy. Even before the ICF criteria came into place, Dr. Christine Roman Lancy had defined the 10 characteristics of CBI, which she uh, used to document by observation, direct examination, and by speaking to parents. So she defined three uh, phases of CVI. Phase one, only dorsal stream function. Phase two, there is also a beginning of ventral stream function. And in phase three, ventral stream function is also getting refined. So with each one of these, there were specified therapeutic modalities, interventions that could be used. And this is a extremely handy 
way of looking at CVI, especially for low functioning CVI. All people who are used to working with children with disability know about the classification systems based on function like the gross motor visual functional classification, communication functional classification, etc. We are a little late coming into this uh, for functional classification, but it has now been remedied by Baranello and others who have done a five stage classification which is based on the ICF principles of activity participation concepts and not based on pathology. So you have five levels of uh, uh, for classification. Level one is easy and good use of vision. And in level five, the child has no vision even in highly uh, adapted environments. So they have defined what purposeful use of vision is. That is to see, recognize, interact, and what compensatory strategies children can use in order to achieve that either on their own reflexively or if they are taught. So this only defines what is the use of vision in day-to-day -day activities. It is not an assessment tool, it does not describe etiology, and it also does not, um, it only describes how the child is performing in best conditions. His actual ability, capacity to improve may be much more than this. We must also understand that in all classifications, whether it is VFCS or uh, any other classification, the levels can change. A child who has seems to have good vision when he is very young may find that he is not uh, keeping up when he goes to a higher class when visual demands are more. Then he has to copy from the blackboard, he has to take part in games. If he has mild dorsal stream dysfunction, he will not be able to do this. Whereas a child who if he is taught how to do some adaptation, some compensatory strategies can move up one level. So these are the limitations of VFCS and we have to keep on repeating this assessment once in a couple of years at least to understand where we are with this child. So most of the time classification of disease is done using the international, um, uh, the ICD code uh, by uh, WHO and um, this is also the criteria which is used uh, most of the time for certification for uh, visual impairment for these uh, children. ICD-11 has progressed a little bit in the sense that it does describe disorder of visual cortex and contrast sensitivity and color vision impairments also in the new um, uh, set which has been released in January 2023. But still, uh, it does not describe visual function. So if we have to tell a school board that this child has got good vision but he cannot copy from the board, they will just look at you and say like, where are you coming from? So many of these children end up being labeled as learning disabled and slow learners. So which means that we have still not defined CVI properly, we have still not classified the disorders. And if we don't do that, the children do not get access to the resources and concessions which are made by governments and school bodies. And it has a huge impact on their opportunities. So a lot of work is still needed to be done in order to uh, classify and explain these uh, uh, impairments to the public at large and also to make it available uh, as a certification modality. I thank you all for a patient um, hearing. Thank you, Sudha, for, Sudha, for that excellent, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk, and uh, you have really opened the, uh, you know, Pandora's box. And uh, we were all thinking that uh, this CVI is something, you know, which, uh, uh, you know, which has a very strict, rigid uh, outline. But you have uh, created an awareness, and you have told us so many new, uh, you know, uh, you have given us a knowledge about this. Uh, uh, you know CVI, and uh, if anybody has any questions, you know you can please feel free to ask. Come. Thank you, ma'am, for mentioning that CVI is not recognized. It's so terrible that yeah. our children are labeled not only as slow learners but attention deficit, yes. and the reason they don't see. Thank you. I, yes. Thank mm. you so much. They are not slow learners or learning disabled. They learn in different ways. 
So that is something that has to be recognized by everybody. They can be made excellent auditory learners. So uh, how we are going to get this into the minds of certifying, a, see once you get a label, a certificate to say you're learning disabled, that stays with you throughout your life. So uh, may, they, they, they don't get admission in some schools and colleges and you know job opportunities become restricted. So we need to change classifications and definitions.